Hey guys, what's going on? Drewsy here, back again with another South Park Phone Destroyer video and more details on the new theme that's going to be launching here very soon into South Park Phone Destroyer. And we get to do an exciting little sneak peek at just three of the cards that are going to be coming out here when the new theme goes live. Now, I knew, need to make sure that you guys are aware that these cards are subject to change and some of their stats and or abilities or things like that could change here when the cards do go live. But Red Links has given us the opportunity to sneak peek three of the cards of the ten that are going to be coming out when the new theme theme goes live here sometime next week so because of that we're going to be talking about those three cards real quick but i will have on monday a more breakdown of all 10 of the cards that are going to be coming out as well as some gameplay of those cards in action so that's going to be really exciting but i have to wait on that for a few more days now but i can at least give you the sneak peek to get you ready for that video that's going to be coming out later next week so here we go let's quickly look at all three cards as you've seen them in the screenshot so they're not a huge surprise to you but these are the three cards here on screen now with some of their more in-depth stats we got super fart which is a two energy cost uh, spell card that is a common. We have Fast Pass at a 3 energy cost epic card for Jimmy at 211 base health, 48% base damage. And then Human Kite, a 4 energy cost flying unit, 140 uh, base health and 26 base damage. And he is a ranged unit per usual for Kyle. So, Super Fart, let's look at that real quick. Pushes enemies away from the new kid and deals 40% damage. This does scale up with the leveling of this card. So 40 is the base amount of damage that Super Fart does. Super Fart is a pretty hilarious animation. And yes, you would expect that farting would be an entity when in Fractured Butthole and in Stick of Truth, Super Fart was a thing. So of course, it is now going to be a more usable thing here within the superheroes theme. It is directed directly from your new kid. None of your units will cast Super Fart specifically. So it is a kind of a cool animation it is funny and it is seems to be very useful and at a cheap energy cost is something that people will probably use quite a bit with the superhero theme and something that may or may not be a must with the superheroes going forward but it is the only spell card that's going to be coming out here in the beginning phases but i'm sure more will fi fizzle in as we go along next let's look really quick at fast pass which is jimmy of course fast pass we already talked about his stats. He has a charge ability where he targets the nearest enemy and damages all enemies in his path. So he does not have any kind of speed boost like we assumed he may have when Fast Pass was most likely going to be coming in this theme. We just didn't know when. Uh, but he does have kind of an animation similar to Base War Token does kind of. Uh, but at least the animation on screen looks similar to what Ink and Craig does. But it is very different than both of those two characters. He does dash forward and then dash back to the same location from where he dashed from. It does target enemies. It does seem to attack the new kid directly as well. As well as go through as many enemies as it does. But it has a line effect or at least looks like the image of the ability is similar to what Ink and Craig's is, but it obviously is extremely different than Ink and Craig's ability. But it's just a very unique ability. I don't know how good Fast Pass is overall, but he does get his charge ability back extremely fast. So, of course, I mean, Fast you know, is in his name, right? So you would assume that. So he does get his charge ability quite often, but uh, his survivability doesn't seem to be overpowering to the point to where you're going to get to cast it an, a numerous amount of times. You may get it off maybe two to three times at most, uh, if you're able to keep him alive for a long enough time, but I don't see him, you know, you just getting to use his ability five, six, seven times or anything ridiculous. I think it's just going to be a normal amount that you may get with a charge ability defaultly, but just be aware that it will happen much more often. So he is someone you could cast behind the new kid and possibly use his defensively with his charge ability as well. I'm not sure as far as the charge, the scaling of the damage itself for the charge ability, but you do get it back very often. So even if it's not extremely powerful, you do, you do get to be able to use it multiple times, most likely, in a given engagement. And then we're going to have Human Kite here, a 4 energy cost flying unit. So it is very similar, a kind of a hybrid of Bounty Hunter Kyle and Kyle of the Drow Elves, which of course are two Kyle units. He has, a char he has a charge ability where he shields allies in an area beneath him for 5 seconds. So it is an aura effect for his shields versus what... Kyle of the Drive does, which defaultly gets shields to all units on the field. So that is something to take into consideration as well with Human Kite. Uh, I feel like the shields, and they last for five seconds, which is a decent amount of time. It's not overpowering in, in all scale. I'm not sure if that's equal to or greater than what Kyle of the Drive's shields do. Uh, but it is longer than some other shields that do last here within this game. So that is also up there. Four energy cost flying unit is kind of similar. Usually most flying units are either 4 or 3 energy costs, so that kind of sticks to the norm. And uh, I don't think Human Kite is overpowering. I do like the fact that his basic attacks do are lasers that fire out of his eyes, which 
stick to his lore and make human kite the way he is and that that's kind of cool to me and then of course the having the shield is also a default that we've have found with human kite within fracture but whole so that sticks true here in phone destroyer so i'm glad the phone destroyer is kind of keeping to some of the norm that we've already seen with these cards in action in the other game that they're basically based off of to some degree so that's also kind of nice so yeah, this is just a sneak peek, guys, unfortunately, of these three cards. are the only cards we're allowed to discuss today. But I will have much more information, of course, on Monday when I'm able to give you the other, all the rest of the cards. That are the other seven that I am not able to talk about here in this one. So all ten will be discussed in that video. All ten will also be on display in some gameplay in another video that's going to be coming out that same day. Very excited to show that off to you guys. But again, it's just a quick sneak peek. I'm very excited to at least give you this for now. And hopefully you guys are excited that this gives you hyped up for the new theme that's going to be coming out here very soon in the phone destroyer which i am excited about and hopefully we'll see if a meta shift happens at all it may take some time but we'll see how long it takes for a possible meta shift to superheroes being more normal within this game but thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed the content and until next time guys my name is juicy